Hi, my name is Micah Vandergrift, and I'm a librarian currently working as a project manager in scholarly communications at Florida State University. You can find me around the web using the handle Micah Vandergrift. I'm proud to be a contributor to this panel, Philosophical Leadership Needed for the Future, Digital Humanities Scholars and Museums, which is part of the 39th Annual Museum Computer Network Conference. I'll keep my comments brief, as I'm still newish to the field and my interactions and observations are based mainly on readings and experiences I've had as a student and new professional. Here's a quick story. I had the pleasure of working at the Brooklyn Public Library in New York on a cooperative grant project with the Brooklyn Museum and the Brooklyn Historical Society. This project is creating a shared digital collection of historic photos of Brooklyn and is still underway, although I have moved on. One day at work I was tweeting about how cool it was to collaborate with different types of institutions and I got a tweet back from Ethan Wattrell, a scholar at Michigan State University. He excitedly was asking me if the Brooklyn Museum had any plans to digitize their slide collection from an Egyptian archaeological dig or something along those lines, and he expressed with many exclamation points and extended syllables how valuable access to those images would be to his research. This was the first time I had ever encountered the idea that museum collections could be of extreme value to working scholars and were more than institutions for pres preserving and sometimes showing old objects, old things. To be fair, the Brooklyn Museum is on the cutting edge of a lot of progressive technological ideas, and to their credit, but it was an eye-opening moment for me. Lately, I've been thinking and rethinking an idea that probably already exists somewhere, that the digital humanities have this capacity and are becoming the space in which public history exists. For now, we're seeing this enacted from universities outward, uh, digital humanities centers building tools, using databases, creating visualizations, an opening up worlds of knowledge compiled and organized by scholars, librarians, archivists, and others. As the predominant institutions of public history, it would seem that museums and, and historical societies would naturally follow suit, opening up collections, creating collaboration, and generally working to deepen their connection with the public and also scholars who are beginning to expect access to all these institutions have to offer. The subtitle of this panel could be read two ways. How does a digital humanities scholar gain greater access to museum resources, or is it time to employ digital humanities scholars as staff in museums? Both are relevant inquiries. As an early co career librarian, I prefer not to give advice to my superiors on how to move forward, but per perhaps I can offer some insight from my perspective as an interested party. Uh, public history in institutions have an incredible opportunity to continue to evolve and engage the public with capital P, and the key, which is continually echoed in digital humanities circles, and this is my first point, is being open to new collaborations. Project Chart, the previously mentioned project that I uh, worked with at the Brooklyn Public Library, in my mind is a great example of this, bringing together different types of institutions who all essentially have the same goals to work together on providing meaning to objects through and across the digital space we share. Secondly, developing these collaborations may require some non-traditional efforts. We talk a lot about silos in the university between departments, colleges, administrative offices, and in my experience, those same divisions exist in other types of institutions too. Beginning to think outside of those boundaries and imagine projects that incorporate different types of skills and giving teams a space, physical or otherwise, to have conversations and begin to learn how to speak one another's language will open opportunities that we haven't yet imagined. Practically, I'd love to see museums and libraries uh, to that end free up some, some percentage of work time for motivated employees to really start to explore their interests. That'd be the kind of structural change that would begin to avail digital humanities work to be done in these kind of institutions. Lastly, I think it's clear that folks who will be interested in this type of work collaborative, broad-reaching digital projects will be unique. But good news from a recent library school graduate, myself, there are plenty of soon-to-be graduates with skills ranging from technical expertise to amazing depth of knowledge on a variety of topics, and many of them are more than prepared to be innovative. So, and this will, is where I will offer a piece of advice, hire someone with good ideas. Hire someone who expresses interest in digital humanities but may lack some skills that they can build up. Set up a table at a job fair at a, a local school and start mining schools in your area for computer science students, 
uh, communications and new media folks, digital historians, or a good old-fashioned liberal studies major. I think it's time to acknowledge that much of the innovation and progression that we're hoping for in museums, uh, libraries, universities, government, will come from non-traditional, think-outside-the-box types. And luckily, they're out and about now. If there's one point I'd like to get across about what I see as the key to adapting the philosophical uh, leadership in museums, it'd be this. The power structures are changing. Hire good, interesting people with big imaginations and trust and support them to do good, interesting work with your stuff. Thank you very much, from, and goodbye from Tallahassee, Florida.